Hey guys, welcome to our Fall Fest. And our favorite part of Fall Fest is the Bible Walk. So I am Pastor Lisa, and we will be your tour guides. And this is my co-host, Doug, my husband. And Hi, he's, guys. He's going to be joining us on this Bible Walk. So guys, I hope that you get, get your candy bag, bring it to the TV, sit down in front, and be prepared to go on this amazing Bible walk with us. I am so excited. I don't know whether I'm going to like the Old Testament better or the New Testament better. I mean, there's some awesome stories in the Old Testament, but I know we get to meet Jesus in the New Testament, which is kind of getting to see what God is like. So I'm excited about I think I'm just going to judge it by the candy. Okay, that's a good idea. And really, it all goes together. So you really can't have one without the other. They all go together. So guys, let's start in the Old Testament. So guys, I'm going to take you back to the very beginning. And we have these sweet little angelic angels that are going to tell us what happened at the very beginning of the Bible. In the beginning, the earth was totally dark and empty. Then out across the Milky Way, God shouted, let there be light. It was the dawn of creation. Here's the Milky Way to remind you about God's creation. You were right. Those little cherubs were very sweet. And so is this Milky Way. Have you already eaten it? Well, yeah. I mean, it's delicious. My goodness. Okay, well, we better get on to the next story. Now we're going to meet Adam and Eve. They are the very first people that God created. Adam and I lived in the Garden of Eden, the most beautiful place on earth. But we ate the one fruit that God told us not to touch. Because we disobeyed God, we had to leave our beautiful garden home. Our apple candy should remind you of our big mistake. Uh, I've been trying to find the caramel apple sucker and I can't really find it. Is it in the bag here somewhere? Yeah, it'll be in there. I don't want to slow us down. Let's just go on. <laughs> Okay. Well then, guys, after a while, the people became so wicked that God covered the sins of the world with a flood. Everyone except Noah, his family, and two animals of every kind were safe in the ark. When God destroyed this evil earth with a flood, he promised he would never do it again. When you see the beautiful colors of the rainbow in the sky, it is a reminder of God's promise. There's a package of rainbow-colored candy just for you. Those actors were really, really good. I love this story. It's a pretty rainbow, isn't it? It really is. Okay, so after that, we are going to go on to meet the father of the Israelite nation. This is Ab Abraham and his wife, Sarah. God pr promised Abraham and his family that they would number the stars in the sky, but Abraham could not figure out how, because he and Sarah didn't have any children. God told me I was gonna have a baby when I was 90 years old. That is so old. How old was it? Hey, when she took her driver's test, it was on a dinosaur. When she used to babysit, it was for Yoda. Actually, she laughed when she heard God say she was going to have a baby. I didn't laugh. I just gave a little snicker. <laughs> I could really use a snicker myself. And I'm pretty sure I saw that in here somewhere. I <laughs> got it. All right. Well, you go right ahead and eat that and snicker while you do. Abraham and Sarah's special son was named Isaac. Let's meet him and his wife, Rebecca. Abraham and Sarah, my father and mother, prayed that I would have the perfect wife. And we've been sweet tarts ever since. Now, they seem like a really nice couple. Yeah, I think they are. And there's more to their story. Across the way, we will meet Isaac and Rebecca's twin sons. Hi, my name is Jacob, and this is my twin brother Esau. Some twins look alike, but we don't. I'm the oldest. I was born a few minutes before Jacob. Remember, twins, twins double your fun with double bubble gum. I remember the story of Jacob and Esau. I really like that story, too. This is awesome. I know. I even think it's so funny that those two twins did not look anything alike. Now... 
I will introduce you to one of Jacob's sons. This young man's name is Joseph. I was only 17 when my father gave me this beautiful coat. I was his favorite out of his 12 sons. So here's some colorful candy to remind you of my coat of many colors. Kind of makes our duds here seem a little boring, doesn't it? Yeah, we're pretty plain white. We're not very colorful, are we? I like this coat. Yeah, this coat's very beautiful. Joseph was able to save the Israelites by taking them to Egypt to avoid the famine. But then after many years, the new Pharaoh was not so kind. He turned the Israelites into slaves. We're going to meet the man that God used to free God's people. I am Moses. After Pharaoh let the Israelites leave Egypt, we had to cross the desert to get to the promised land. God was always with us and good to us, but sometimes the people complained. One time they were so upset with me, they said, Moses, why did you bring us here? The desert is so hot, we're thirsty, we need water, give us water. I talked to God and God said, speak to that rock and see what will happen. But I was so upset with the people that I struck the rock with my staff and surprise, water started gushing out of the rock. Here is some candy gushers to remind us that even when we complain sometimes, God is always faithful. Wow, Moses was incredible. I wonder if God knew that we would have a candy called gushers. I don't know, but man, God really worked through that person, Moses. He did a lot for God. My goodness, what kind of faith that must have taken. Now, let's look at a little boy with a lot of faith. Ha, 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 who stands up to the mighty Goliath? I do. Killing a giant isn't so hard to do when you aim carefully and have God's power to carry you through. All I know is that stone he shot sure was a whopper. David was deathfully impressive. I can see why he became king. So I think no matter if you're a man or a boy, God can give you a lot of faith and do amazing things in and through you, no matter your age. Hmm. Well now, David did become a king of Israel when he was 30 years old. Solomon was David's son who became king after he died. Many of my sayings or proverbs are found in the Bible. Some people call me a wise man, but I just consider myself a smarty. Hey, hang on a minute. I'm going to find those smarties. We're going to see if those really work or not. Why, well, uh, you think you need some more wisdom here? Well, maybe not so much me, but I thought you could use some. Oh, well, thanks a lot. Okay, let's move on to the next story. Let's meet some brave young man who stood up for their belief in God, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. King Nebuchadnezzar threw us into this fiery furnace, a ring of fire, all because we wouldn't bow down to his golden idol. He thought he was seeing things when he saw four of us walking around in the fiery furnace. But really, it was our God here to protect us and keep the fiery flames from turning us into fireballs. Oh, oh. You know what I was really struck with in that story? That was hilarious. Those boys were so handsome. Hmm. Must be in their genetics. Yeah, could be, I don't know. Okay, well let's go on. I thought they were kind of entertaining. I like the little dance and chant that they did. Round and round. Yeah, I think it was something like that. Okay, well, all right, now let's go on. These young men were not the only ones that God saved from a certain death. God delivered Daniel too. I was trapped in this lion's den because I worshiped God, not King Darius. But God sent down an angel to shut the mouths of these lions. Now they're as gentle as kitty cats. Meow. 
Here, have a Kit Kat for your troubles. I know they said that those lions were safe, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm staying back just a little bit. Did you think they looked scary? Well, I mean, you know, yeah, I guess so. I thought they were so cute. I love little kitty cats. Mm -hmm. I thought they were awesome. Well, many prophets in the Old Testament prophesied about the coming Savior. He would be king and he would reign, his reign would never end. It would go on and on and on. He would be the savior for all mankind. Let's hear what the prophet said. The Messiah will come to restore the world. He will not judge by what his eyes see or what his ears hear. But in righteousness, he will care for the poor, the widow, and the orphan. He will be the restorer of this broken world and usher in the peaceable kingdom. Our world is broken, but Jesus will piece it back together again. Reese's Pieces will remind you that Jesus is the restorer of broken pieces. I don't know about you, but like his speech just like sucked me in. I mean, I was, I mean, that guy was serious. He was very serious. I think it was because he knew he was really telling the truth and he wanted everyone to hear this really good news. Hmm. Well, guys, we are now leaving the Old Testament and now we are moving into the New Testament. But again, they tie together because the Old Testament is telling about what's gonna happen in the special Messiah that's gonna come to us all. So as we continue on our walk, we're gonna move into the New Testament with an important announcement from some angels. They announced this to the shepherds who are watching their sheep by night. Unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. The star will lead you to the Christ child. Here is a starburst to remind you. I'd say two of those Angels look like angels, and one of them, eh, but that's just me. Oh, my goodness. I'm not <laughs> sure who that would, one would be, but let's, uh, let's go on. So, guys, the shepherds, they left their sheep, and they followed the star to Bethlehem, where they found Mary and Joseph and a sweet little baby Jesus. Mary, can you believe our son is the promised Messiah? I believe it in my heart, but for now... He's my sweet sugar baby. That may have been one of the cutest little babies I have ever seen. I know. I was so drawn in. I wanted to pick him up and hold him. Yeah, he was really, really cute. Oh, my goodness. Well, they said that candy was the sugar babies. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'll have to see I if think I can... that one really goes well with that sweet baby. I'll try to find those. Okay. There they are. There they are. <laughs> mm. Enjoy those kids and remember our sweet baby Jesus. Now, the shepherds were the first visitors to see baby Jesus. But a while later, wise men came. They came from the east following the star to Bethlehem to find him there. We rode for weeks upon weeks following the brightest star in the sky. I've never been so sore from riding my camel. I'm sorry, John. We were like the three musketeers on a journey to find the newborn king. I don't know, I just thought the wise men would look a little wiser, but I guess they're just like you and me. I think so, and, and no, think about it. They had to travel a long, long way. Yeah, and by camel, that would be almost ridiculous. Yeah, but they knew there was something special. That star really signified something special had happened. I'm glad that they went and found him. Now at our next stop, we're going to meet James and John. They were fishermen who became two of the first disciples to follow Jesus. Being a fisherman is such hard work. One time we stayed out there all night and didn't catch a single fish. Jesus came by our boat the next morning and told us to go back out and cast our nets again. We brought in so many fish that our boat began to sink. Take these fish as a reminder of our big catch that day and how we followed Jesus to become fisher of men, not fishermen. That was impressive. That was really impressive. Those guys and their ability to, to follow Jesus and, and 
change their call from, what did they say, from fishermen to fishers of men. That, yeah. was, that was very interesting. I think so too. Hmm. Well, the next man we're going to meet is John the Baptist. He lived out in the hot, sandy desert of Judea. My job was to let the people know that Jesus was ready to begin ministry on earth. I'd tell people, prepare the way for the Lord. When I get hungry out here, I ate locust and a bit of honey. Here's some for you. Incredible what the heat and the desert and the wind can do to your hair. Yeah, John the Baptist's hair looks pretty wild. But you know, he had a purpose and a plan. He was really preparing this way for this Messiah to come. I'm just impressed that he went through all of this to be this great one. I'm just glad he gave him a bit of honey instead of a bit of locust. Yeah, me too. I don't think the kids would have liked locusts to eat, do you? No, no. All right. I bet you kids are glad too that you get a bit of honey instead of locusts. Well, now let's move on. When Jesus was here on earth, he did many miraculous signs and wonders. One time, a large crowd of people had spent three days listening to Jesus teach, and they were all getting very hungry. Let's see what happened. We did not have enough food to feed everybody, but Jesus really wanted us to. I had a lunch of two fish and five loaves of bread, and I was willing to share. So I brought them to Jesus, and Jesus blessed the food, and the disciples started to pass them out. And when we got done feeding everybody, we collected all the leftovers, and there were 12 baskets full. Here's a, here's a, bat of, a bag of goldfish to remind you of all the wonderful things that, that Jesus does. This story came along at just the right time because I was about to die from all the sugar. So I'm really glad that they gave us these goldfish. Uh, I needed that relief. Yeah, and just think about how God did that miracle and multiplied all of that food. And that every single person there, were, they were filled and they had plenty left over. It just seems like the kingdom of God is like that, that everyone is filled and there's plenty for all people. Well, now let's go to the home of two sisters who were some of Jesus' best friends. Hi, I'm Mary, and this is my sister, Martha. Did you know that Jesus rose our brother, Lazarus, from the dead? He said, Lazarus, come forth. Hello, Mary. Hello, Martha. m and m should be a reminder of Mary, Martha, and the miracle that Jesus performed for us. Mary and Martha, that was a really good story. I was kind of surprised by that one. I yeah. liked it. Yeah. What well, was interesting, again, how, how Jesus just raised Lazarus from the dead. He must have really cared for Mary and Martha. And I think he also wanted to show them that he could do this. Did that startle you just a little bit? It did. I wasn't prepared for that. And then when he sat up, I kind of jumped back. But I'm so happy for them. God just has a way of healing us in so many ways. Well, now let's go to the next place. The last meal Jesus had with his disciples before he was killed was in an upper room. Let's see what happened there. Jesus told us about the kingdom of God, and then he began washing our funky feet. I did not like having Jesus serve me, but he said this must happen, that we must imitate him and serve our brothers and sisters. While we ate our feast, Jesus told us that he was going to die, and then in three days he would raise from the dead. We did not understand all of that, but it was still nice to have a free feast with our Lord. Here's a small feast to remind you of the wonderful fellowship you too can have with Jesus. So I gotta ask you, what do you think about uh, those two disciples? I thought they did a great job and I thought they were handsome. I really did, to even though they have stinky feet. <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, to each their own. I didn't really think they were that handsome, but they were okay. <laughs> All right. Well, now we're going to go on where we will witness the ultimate act of love when Jesus died on the cross for our sins. 
Jesus was my son, but I always knew he had come to earth to be the savior of humankind. He gave up his life to show me the depth of his love. I choose to trust and follow him. He is my lifesaver. He is a lifesaver for all of us. It's always amazing when you think of Jesus as our lifesaver. Sometimes I guess I can forget all that he's done for us, but that really made that point, I thought. Yeah, and it really showed how much he loves each and every one of us, that he is willing to give himself for us. Mm. What depth of love, something to ponder and think about. But guys, here's the great news. Jesus did not stay in the grave very long. He had told everyone that he would defeat death and rise again. Let's hear this amazing story. When we went to the tomb to mourn, we had found that the stone was rolled away, and the only ones in the tomb were the angels telling us that Jesus was alive. He had told us that he would rebuild the temple in three days, but we were such dum-dums and did not understand that he was talking about himself. Here is a dum-dum to remind you not to be like us, but that Jesus is alive and is always with you. Man, I'll tell you, it is miraculous what God can do. Did you see the size of that stone that he rolled away? And can you imagine how they would have reacted to find it empty, the tomb empty? Well, at first, I think some people thought that somebody had come and stole Jesus' body. But the angels told him, no, that wasn't so. That Jesus really did raise from the dead. God raised Jesus, his son, from the dead. Man, and we have that same hope as children wow. that belong to him. Incredible. That is incredible, and that's amazing. That's worth singing and dancing and if we didn't have to sit on this bench, I'd even say, you want to dance with me? But we better not. Okay, let's move on to the next story. Um, after Jesus returned to heaven, he told his disciples he would send a helper. Let's see who that helper is going to be. We were gathered together in the upper room, and that's when it happened. A huge wind blew, and tongues of fire were dancing over our head. We were so unsure about what was happening, but we felt the spirit of the Holy Presence come upon us. That's when we knew that the helper that Jesus promised was here. And here is some candy to help remind you of when the Holy Spirit had came. It'll burn your tongue. Wow, that must have been incredible to have actually seeing the Holy Spirit in the form of, what they say, tongues of fire? Yeah. Oh, you know what? I heard if you take the hot tamales and eat it with your popcorn, it's like cinnamon popcorn and that that's really good. Hmm. Well, the kids could try it. If you guys want to, have your parents pop you some popcorn, mix it together and see what that tastes like. That is an awesome story though. The power of the Holy Spirit came so that we can always have God's presence with us wherever we go. And Good that point. he can strengthen us. I love that, so beautiful. Man, now we need to meet another man that encountered this presence of God. This man followed the laws of the Old Testament that did not recognize Jesus as the savior until he was blinded by the truth. I was traveling to Damascus to arrest those who believed Jesus was the Son of God, when suddenly I was struck by a blinding light, and out of that light came a voice. It was Jesus telling me to stop persecuting his disciples. I was blind for three days. Then a follower of Jesus came and gave me my sight back. I had been such a lemonhead for so many years, but now I know that Jesus truly is the Son of God. Blinded by the light. I actually kind of like that song, and that's what that reminded me of. Uh, you should have sang a little more of it. You just start, got started there. Well, there's, I can't, I'm not sure I know all the words, but I like that first part. Okay, well, that's all right. Well, I'm not gonna sing it, so we'll just have to deal with that. But you know what? That man really was blinded by the light, and, and it was the presence of God, and it really, 
turned his life around. Yeah, for sure. He was transformed by the truth. Wow. Now, Paul went on to tell many different nations about the love of God and how they can find salvation through Jesus. We are also called to, sp to spread the love of God and tell others the good news of Christ. Let's see what happens when we hear from Jesus. So I met with the disciples up on a mountain for us to worship and pray. And as we came time to end, I said to the disciples, all authority on heaven and on earth have been given to me. So go and baptize all people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them everything that I've commanded you. And remember, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, this is the good news that God is always going to be with us. And God is going to teach us to keep those greatest commandments to love God and to love one another. But kids, I have a secret to tell you. This is the good news. God's mind is already made up about you, and the news about you is good. So I'm going to be giving you candy corn so that you can use this like a seed to plant and bring the kingdom of God in the world to love each other and to love God well. I know this was just the Bible walk, but won't it be exciting when we actually get to see Jesus? I don't know. That's what I kept thinking about when I watched him do the Great Commission is what a neat thing it will be to actually see Jesus. Mm. And you know what? We kind of do now in and through each other, in and through the ways in which we care for one another and love each other, we actually kind of see Jesus in one another. Mm. And I think that's pretty amazing. God left us that gift of his presence with us and he lives in us. So we do get to see him. Mm. Hmm. Thanks for letting me go with you on the Bible walk. Of course. I'm glad you journeyed with me. It's always better journeying through life together, don't you think? I think so. Kids, we are so glad that you went on this Bible walk with us. I hope that you will take from that some truth and know that God loves you. And again, his mind about you is made up. And, and the, the news, news is, is good. good. Hey, kids, I wanted to remind you to dress up in your favorite costume post it on our kids' Facebook page, and we will have a contest. We're gonna have an individual contest and a group contest. I want you to get dressed up in your craziest costume. And one year, you dressed up in this crazy costume and nobody knew who you were. You really surprised everybody. They thought it was somebody they never knew. One of the pastors called the police on me and the other one tried to drag me to the altar. So, anything goes, dress up. Um, we will announce our winner on November 1st, so you have from tonight, the 28th, through the 31st to post your pictures, and the first prize winners in each category will win $50. So guys, remember to do that. Me and Miss Pastor Dana love seeing you guys dressed up, so we're really looking forward to seeing these pictures. Thank you. Can't wait to see you. Bye.